uh, Ben Cunnington went to the tribunal. Would uh, Waleed Ali and Malcolm Turnbull be backing him up during it? Oh, they seem like pretty good character references, so we might, uh, might try that next time. But our experience with the tribunal is if we fight it, we lose. So um, maybe clearly we should try something different. In, in, all all serious, yeah. in all seriousness, though, does it make you think that perhaps you should have tried to fight at the tribunal, given what's happened? No, every, every case is treated on its merits. Um, so, look, and the, the bottom line with the Cunnington thing is he, um, he did something which he regrets. He had a clenched fist. Um, whether you can argue whether he got him in the chest or the neck, but one angle shows that maybe he got him in the neck. So, to the letter of the law, the decision is correct. So, we're not going to fight a decision that we actually think is probably right. And Ben's disappointed. He was, um, he was fined after the Melbourne game for a little sneaky jumper punch, and he didn't learn his lesson the second time. So, we copped the penalty on, on our chin. How has Jack Siebel recovered when we played this week? Yeah, he's going to full train, so he, he should be okay. Um, he's a little bit been a little bit banged up this year at various stages, but uh, just the way he goes about it, he should be he should be fine. Um, we obviously won't take any risks with him, but we expect him to be right. If Cunnington was playing, would you consider giving him a week off? Uh, no, it wouldn't wouldn't come into our thinking either way. Uh, if he wasn't right and Cunnington wasn't there, we wouldn't play him. So um, the fact that Ben won't be there won't affect our decision making with Jack. Have you decided on a replacement for Cunnington at this stage? Um, we've got probably our squad of five, uh, 25 tr basically set. We've got to wait on some medical clearance for, for maybe one or two guys. Um, yeah, but there are some certainly some options in there. Mountford's added something to our midfield as well. Uh, Swallow came back and was influential, particularly in the second half last week. So you know, there are some other guys that are pushing up um, from the VFL, and we're pleased that we'll get Jai, Sims Jai Simkin back in the VFL this week. Hopefully Ben Jacobs, but we certainly won't take any risks with him if he's not quite right. So there are some options there. Uh, Mitch Hibbert's been playing some pretty good footy. There are a few other guys. So um, we're not finalised just yet, but we're not far off. Is Lindsay Thomas one of those options considering he's back from suspension this week? Yeah, he's available. And, and while uh, hasn't had the match time that we've wanted due to suspension, he's certainly had the training time. So, yeah, he, he's, he's one of the guys in that mix. Who are the guys then that are on the borderline of, uh, of selection in terms of their, their fitness this week that need to pass a test today? Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> uh, is Braden um, bashing the door down? <laughs> <laughs> Braden Bruce, is he bashing the door down with 60 um, odd hit outs last week in the VFL? Yeah, um, I mean, look, he's, he's doing what we've asked of him. Um, Braden, Braden is, I will tell you this one, Braden is one of the guys with an elbow who um, he's a bit touch and go to even play at VFL level this week. So to, if he's touching, even if he plays VFL level, um, I think it's unfair to bring him in when he's not absolutely perfect. So, and even if he was, you know, we've got to work out the Magic Door Brown Goldstein thing. I don't know the questions are going to keep coming each week, and um, you know, we've just got to weigh up our opposition. Gold Coast have now got some of their big key defenders back. So whether we think that's an advantage or not, you know, we have to weigh up. But Braden, Braden won't play. Um, in the AFL this week. We want to get him, when he comes in, we want to make sure he's in perfect health. Are you expecting Gary Ablett to play this week? Uh, yep, yeah, because we're planning for their best. Uh, we're planning for, for all the guys who are, who are maybes. We expect them to play and expect them to be at their best. So that's what we're planning for and we'll work back from there. And were you pleased with the way your, forward, your tall forwards particularly came together last week? I thought, yeah, later, the longer the game went, the, the better they looked. Um, and forwards are always going to be dictated to, to a certain extent, how the ball's being directed to them. I thought the team adjusted pretty well after half time and, and the forwards took advantage. So, um, yeah, it was better, um, but we still think we've got a lot of improvement to make. Glenn Archer, what was your take on that whole situation? Uh, look, I think the club uh, released a statement. Glenn's a board member, so that's, that's why we released the statement. I think the statement said it all. I haven't got anything else to add. Loss by goal or for less. I mean, how difficult is it not to let the I guess frustration at that come into like, the psyche of your players? I mean, win two of those and the picture's a lot different. Yeah. Oh, look, we, we certainly look at the the. Um, there was a very different game on the weekend. We were fighting back from a from a, a deficit, and you know we fought the game right out. We're looking to be competitive and play a style of footy that's competitive against everyone, and largely. Um, we've shown that this year and you know, to put it really simply, if you're, if you're winning all those games, you're one of the best teams. So um, are we one of the best teams yet? Well, we don't think we're at that level. Um, you know, we're certainly striving to be. So you, know, you, can, you can sort of dissect it every which way, but you know, the reality is the, 
the really top teams have a habit of winning the close games, and I don't think we're we're back to a top team just yet. Um, so when we are, I'm sure the the close results usually go our way. You've had a pretty poor away record of late. Is that something you address, or do you know why that might be? Uh, not something I've analysed, to be honest. Um, doesn't you know, records. You know, we've won plenty of games in the state over the journey, you know, but this team is a is a different looking team and um, we haven't played away for a long time. I mean, I, could you tell me the last game we played in the state this year? Not off the top of my head. I, I think two out of the three we lost there. Yeah, one was Adelaide at Blundstone, and won by 10 goals. So no, I know that's our home ground too, so um, probably a different question, but that is in the state and you know, we, um, we don't look into it too much. My view is that uh, you find the good interstate away teams are the good teams. Yeah, they're the same thing. So we're focused on just being a good team. What have you made of the Suns this year and I guess more recently their form? Yeah, well, they're really good, particularly in the first half against St Kilda last week. Uh, we know they're a really capable side. They've got a lot of uh, quality, uh, particularly you know, at both ends of the ground, forward and back. And, and when, with Gary Ablett leading the midfield, if he comes back, and David Swallow, they've got some, some genuine quality in there too. So. Their challenge, like a lot of the teams who aren't you know, locked into the sort of the top four or six on the ladder, is consistency, and it's the same challenge we face. But we know their best is very impressive. Just your thoughts on? It looks like Gaz is going to play at 300. Just your thoughts on on him and, and what he's been able to do over the course of his career. Oh, he's a he's a he's a Hall of Famer. They haven't announced it yet, but we know that he's a he's a Hall of Fame player. He's the best midfielder of probably of his generation. You know the the. Um, you look back at, at Chris Judd and the previous generation and, and they, they tend to stand out. There have been a lot of great players uh, through his era, but, but he's one who for a very long period of time held the mantle as the best player in the game. And you know, even at his age and the stage of his career that he's at now, he's still an extremely dominant player. So he's just been an absolute champion of the game and I think um, has uni universal respect across the competition.